We had sailed down from San Francisco and left Ensenada, where we checked into Mexico, with our sailing vessel Rosa. A quick fishing trip around Todos Santos, and we were headed south again. Something bright in the water caught our eye. Naturally, we began our impromptu man-overboard procedure. The prize? A free buoy. Come loose from some sort of mooring or fishing net. It's big! Yeah. Oh. Eee. Conditions were a little calmer than we expected. The wind was light and we bobbed uncomfortably along, finally turning on the engine. That night, Robbie noticed a significant oil leak after spending three hours on watch. Thank you, husband, for climbing into that dark engine pit in the middle of the night and JB welding some bits back together. The following afternoon, we had arrived at Isla San Martin, but we still didn't have any fish to the dismay of Robbie. We spent the night in San Quintin, in the fog, among a landscape of sandy volcanoes, until it cleared up enough the next day to inspire us to move forward. Give you a gray whale, huh? Without a fresh catch, or refrigeration to speak of, our meals took on a particularly vegan flair. My favorite legume of all time is the chickpea, so I had no complaints here. After the beans were a boil in the pressure cooker, Robbie chopped up all of our root vegetables. fresh tomatoes, or maybe just canned ones if that's all you have, a spoonful of curry, and voila, you fill your belly on the rocky boat. The passage to Cedros Island was odd. Lots of wave and very little wind, but we kept out our Yankee as long as we could, propelled along like this until early morning. Day three down the Mexican coast. We had our usual company of dolphins, as well as some unfamiliar visitors. Look at the regatta. So weird, huh? Mist. They're very fragile, huh? Because they have the bottoms. That flips over. You know, kind of like. little sailing ships. I guess we're not the only thing that sails around here. I wondered what these dolphins made of the little sailboats floating around everywhere. The clouds began to part, and there was Cedros Island. Cedros was the turning point in weather for us. From this point on, the skies remained more or less clear, and the water became warmer. We stopped in the small village near the southern end of the island, and the next day we were off to Tortugas. With dolphins following along, I had the distinct feeling of suddenly finding the water enticing enough to swim in. Looking up and rubbing. Ooh. Oh, that guy looks like he's oh, he's shitting. Okay. 
Okay. Bahia Tortugas was a fine anchorage indeed, but the town seemed a little shut down for the season. Too bad, we really wanted to get a haircut at this place in particular. We climbed up and down, on and off, the rickety pier several times with our groceries, fresh water, and diesel cans that we had walked up the road to the gas station. By the next morning, the other sailboats disappeared northbound, and we were the only yachties left out in the bay. Everybody watch out, locally made salsa in uh, Bahia Tortuga. There's <laughs> the temperature going, <laughs> wow. I was like, oh, it's no more salsa, and I, <laughs> I can't feel my face anymore. <laughs> Especially with sunburned lips, it's burns, but you gotta keep going. Yeah, and yet he keeps on eating it. A trip to the southern side of the bay was a fun-filled day of finding dead stuff. Dolphin bones, turtle shells and bones. Sea lion bones, bird bones. Fossils even. I'm finding there's only one piece of it. Only some small, hardy plants grasping to life around these parts. But yes, mostly just bones. We left Bahia Tortugas, heading for Bahia Asuncion. We were desperately hoping to finally catch another fish. And there it was. One of those big fish that I feel terrible for catching. It was just large enough to slide around in the cockpit. But Robbie had plans for this yellow tail. Ah. Soya sauce, olive oil, taco spice, and smoked Tabasco. That's pretty much it. And a pinch of sugar, just a tiny bit to, to offset the sourness of the soya sauce. And the ideal would be you can either put this in aluminum foil, you can steam them, you can fry them in a pan, you can barbecue them. The ideal would be to put them in a hungi, in a sand oven, wrapped in banana leaves and pandero leaves. Wrap them in what? Plant that goes actually see, it's got like Thorns on each side of the leaves, and you cut the leaves, and you make little packets with them, and it kind of gives this nutty, woody flavor to food. It's very nice, actually. It's a bit hard to find. Perfect fish tacos for the sunny day of sailing. We arrived as night was beginning to fall. A current was pushing us along nicely into the bay. Hey, 
What are you doing? <laughs> what is this? Are you taking a picture of that? Yeah. Hmm? Why? Because. Why? You're watching the line. So what? It's called chalk. Put, you cook like rice, normal dosage, uh, two cups of water for one cup of rice. And when the rice is almost done, you add more water to it and you make a soup what's well, almost the consistency of a very wet porridge and then you can add anything you want to it this has been marinating overnight so it's pretty good It's hard to explain to those on land just how important this particular meal is after spending some rocky nights at sea. When your clothes are all permanently moist from the salt and the mist and your stomach is just not feeling so right, this is the best relief I've had so far. Some cilantro to help you feel like you've had something green and leafy for the day. And the ginger is key. You can have it pickled or fresh. Continuing our journey down this series of crescent-shaped bays, we arrived in Abriojos. This was our time of the Barracuda. You gonna throw them back in? Yeah. Probably not a Barracuda. Woo! Maybe it's not a Barracuda this time. The usual head shaking, jumping. No. Stand still, please, and I'm going to release you straight away. We weren't certain about eating all that barracuda and returned them all to the sea. We rounded up into the little bay and spent a windy night in Abriojos. knots coming down and then we got to Channel Islands and from there it got really calm and beautiful. Uh, the fishing got we got a fish in the Channel Islands and uh, we made our way to Ensenada where we stayed a few days. But that was the best one I've ever heard. You guys can't leave this wind outside. <laughs> oh god that was a good one. And now we're heading to Magdalena yeah. Bay or uh, Bahia Maria. Yep. And I'm looking forward to shrimp, which is a delicacy you find in mangroves. And we might go for a mangrove tour with the boat up the mangroves. I'm going to ask the local how deep it is, and we're going to figure out if we can go all the way up the mangrove with the boat. I have to keep it so that the camera's not pointing over there, because that's where the wind's coming from. Just sitting down to give my two cents when... Oh, fish, 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 oh, fish, 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 on. fish, big fish. Oh, I think we lost it. Yeah, down we just slow the boat down. I think we lost the big one because the big first snipe was bigger. I'm just trying to get rid of the line before he makes a mess. Yeah. I love it. And now uh, it's served. The perfect timing fish. Another overnight passage, we were heading for Bahia Santa Maria at the entrance of Magdalena Bay. 